want to hit line drive. Want to lose weight and keep eating? So, speaking of men, you play a very dominant male in this movie, yes. Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, it's obviously a spoof. What would you be your What would be your definition of or your description? It's, it's a comedic retelling of Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay. And it just answers the question like, what if Christian Grey was black? He was rich, but you didn't know how he got his money. It's a little shady, and <laughs> he's a really Sounds bad good. lover. Like. He's really you just described half the people that are men in Miami. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> no offense. You don't know how they get their money, they're bad lovers, and everything's a little shady. So that's basically. Uh, I should have called Fifty Shades of Miami. Uh, Fifty Shades of Miami could have been. Shades of Miami. We might need to do something like that, actually, yeah, in the future. That should be a great sketch. So, are you kind of. Uh, I, I actually, Chris, I'm sorry, I'm going to put you on the spot. So, she was helping me prep for the interview, and we were watching the. Uh, we both watched the. The preview, you know, the trailer on on our headphones, and she was like, "This might be a little awkward for you because I feel like they're just making fun of white women throughout the whole movie." I was like, "Really? I didn't get that. I didn't really get that." From no, her. She was like, I, yeah. I'm an equal opportunity offender. Don't don't get me wrong. We do make fun of white women, but uh, a sister, we make fun of black girls too, and and brother, we make fun of black dudes too. And, and white guy, don't shake your head. You can too get much. it too. Y'all get it too. Any any Indians in the room? So I just uh, wanted to clear that because that wasn't the per perception that I got. But just in case there's other people out there watching the trailer, I was like, oh, maybe that's what I'm it is. I'm a Wayans. I'm an equal opportunity offender. I get everybody. And, okay. You know, but at the same time, you laugh at other people's expenses and you laugh with the movie. The whole movie is just funny. It's not all race based at all. There's no, some you're hilarious. Racial jokes, but I, I love the thank I you. love the trailer. It looks like it's gonna be really. Funny. That's not even the best stuff. Nowhere close. You know, some I'm movies sure. give you the best stuff. I can't put the best stuff. In a trailer. But what is your what is your your advice to somebody? Because you know everything's different now. So back in the day, like when you first started, you had to. There were gatekeepers, right? Like it's, it was all politics. There yeah. was no like YouTube stars, Vine stars. Now it, the the playing field is equal. Any of us could just be funny, hop on, yep. film ourselves on the phone, and as long as we build a following, we get somebody's attention. Absolutely. We got an in. Absolutely. So what are your what is your advice to somebody like? myself or anybody else who might be funny on Snapchat or, you know, whatever they're doing online. To, how do we make that crossover to the big screen? Well, I mean, when you're talking about the big screen, I think what's great about Vine is it's fast twitch muscles. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Snapchat. It's like, yo, you got 10 seconds to be funny. Bang, punchline. So you learn the construction of a joke. I would tell those guys, get on the stage. Because when you're on, if you, if you want to do comedy, you get on the stage because the stage See, now you gotta be responsible for an audience. Mm -hmm. I did this show, Funniest Wins, and what I found was, and I used Viners, YouTubers, comedians, and I had them all go up against each other to see who was the funniest. What I found was the best writers were the comedians, because the comedians are on stage every night, and they have 300 people sitting there going, make me laugh. Yeah, it's and tough. so it's when you're a Viner or you're a YouTuber, you get to just, or digital, you just throw it out there and you don't have to worry about what the audience says. You, they're hiding behind comments. It's nothing, those are comments. It's nothing like mm -hmm. having somebody, you Boo tell you a joke and they sit there, hmm. Or they start booing you. Does that ever happen to you now, now being who you are as much like before? Oh yeah, people are funny. I go on, I'm on, a, I stay on the road. Listen, I'm on the road every weekend because I'm getting better. I started doing stand-up five years ago. I'm a better artist today than I was before stand-up. Yeah, before stand-up, because now I'm resp I got an audience in my head. I go, mm -hmm. mm, that joke's too far. That's gonna offend people here. Uh, women aren't gonna like that uh -huh. because I'm constantly on stage. And believe me, when I come out, I get a stand ovation half the time when I come on stage. Mm -hmm. That lasts all of two and a half minutes before people go, oh, all right. Make us laugh. Make me laugh. And my goal is, you laughed, you, you, you gave me a stand ovation when I came in. My whole goal is, is to, to make get you it stand up on the way out. Some dudes, why don't send me no ding ding pic. I don't want to see your oh. meat. Oh, I yeah, we I definitely I got one. But it, now you know how we feel. I'm just saying. But imagine how I feel. I the, got one. I don't need to see yours. This is true. These are I mean, facts. mine is beautiful, but I would never send you pictures of it. But the guys do that, though, unwarranted. Like, you know, Why? oh, we had a great first date, and then the next day it's just all of a sudden dick pic. <laughs> Why, where does it come from? <laughs> Nobody asked for that. On the Nobody first was day. Nobody was trying to on talk to you about those day. things. 